This video is to demonstrate the transcanal excision of a posterior superior retraction pocket in a pediatric patient with minimal to mild conductive hearing loss. Now, this retraction pocket has been under follow up for past one, one and a half years and once uh, the retraction pocket was noted to be progressive after multiple visits and with irreversible contact with the uh, incus long process and the cora tympani with the fundus still visible, a decision to operate this was taken given the fact that the opposite ear has already undergone a modified radical mastoidectomy and displays a reasonably high amount of conductive hearing loss. Now, in these kind of pathologies, we recommend that once even when the, the fundus is visible and uh, <clears throat> there is no hearing loss yet or there is no discharge which otherwise are indications to operate, one can consider operating, operating these patients for excision of the pocket because otherwise if left untreated, they can certainly progress go in the medial attic where removal of ossicles and a permanent conductive hearing loss without a presence of an osculoplasty would become inevitable. Also, we would avoid want to avoid a canal wall down surgery in pediatric patients given the, the morbid nature of these surgeries as well as uh, curtsy the cavity issues. So, we are using here a, <coughs> a self returning speculum in the ear just to get a comfortable nice secure sip grip in the in the external canal and uh, standard elevators to elevate the canal skin. Uh, it is preferable to elevate the entire canal skin with the pocket wherever possible so that one is very very sure of not leaving behind any epithelium on the canal wall or in the middle ear. However, if one does indeed uh, create a rent or a, a small hole then uh, one can again meticulously clear the disease from the, uh, the ossicles to be uh, sure. Now, a goal of this surgery is to excise or elevate the retraction pocket, elevate if one can elevate it completely or then excise and uh, augment the posterior superior weak portion of the power sensor using a full thickness cartilage graft from the trachus. A limited aticotomy could be considered if one feels during surgery that the epithelium is intact in indeed going towards the attic region. In this case, it is, it is probably not. So, it is very important to use a very thin and appropriate suction with your flap or with your flag knives or the circular knives as we enter the middle ear because a, a, a bigger than usual suction or high suction pressures are, are most frequently the worst enemy during middle ear flap elevation and often lead to uh, tears or rents in the canal skin or the tympanic membrane or uh, most certainly that could be the case with the weak uh, posterior superior drum that is already not as strong as the rest of eardrum. So, using a thin and appropriate suction is, is very important. Uh, if the suction is very thin, the suction pressures are kept low, the suction can be directly in contact with the frail canal skin. If one uses a bigger suction, then uh, one has to avoid and often use uh, cotton balls which we also generally avoid because of the risk of uh, leaving behind some cotton fibers inside the middle ear area which could later lead to formation of granulomas. Now, as we enter the middle ear, <coughs> one can see that we, we initially begin posterior superiorly and gradually we make our way uh, towards the posterior inferior quadrant to elevate the entire canal skin. It is very important to uh, uh, create larger flaps because they are less amenable to tear as compared to very, very narrow or tunnel kind of flaps which uh, most certainly as the tension over the canal skin increases these uh, narrow flaps would most certainly uh, tear off. Now, generally with regard to ear surgery, we are often uh, primed about the, the bony work and we get to practice a lot of bony work on the uh, cadaver specimens, whether it be the, the canal wall or the middle ear or the, the mastoid cortex per se but uh, much less is, is said or mentioned about the soft tissue work which is probably equally important in all the middle ear surgery as to how to uh, elevate and uh, not uh, or to how to address the mesotympanum or the posterior mesotympanum well which is the start of most pathologies in otitis media. Now, here you see we are using a, a slightly curved sickle knife 
to gradually elevate this uh, uh, pocket um, over the long process of incas and here because the this pocket is attached to the long process of incas it's very important to be very very patient in this step because even the slightest amount of traction on the on the long process of incas could lead to a dislocation or a disarticulation of the incas superior joint which would be catastrophic towards our at entire attempt to make this surgery uh, uh, least morbid as possible and to uh, retain the natural hearing that this this patient uh, this pediatric patient has now again uh, having the appropriate tools and instruments is very important the fact that we need to have a very very minimalistic suction is very important as is uh, the ability to to control your feel in terms of uh, bleeding and be very very patient in elevating this uh, epithelium from the lateral aspect of incus if this were to go medial to incus then we we definitely would have recommended the removal of the uh, incus as well however this being uh, on to the lateral surface we we are making all attempts to gradually elevate the entire pocket from the incus long process but must be born in mind that our, our full thickness cartilage graft shall be resting on to the lateral aspect of the uh, uh, long process of incus in fact in continuity in in contact with it so it's very important to elevate the pocket or the parts tensa from the uh, incus long process completely and not leave behind any remnants because if that be so then you would end up having entrapped epithelium or cholestatoma inside the middle ear with an opaque drum thus uh, compounding our our troubles uh, greatly now at any point of time once we feel that the superior traction is too much we could release the flap inferiorly a little bit more to be able to uh, uh, keep pushing anteriorly the most frequent cause of flap tears here is creating a small flap rather than big flap and creating a tunnel sort of a flap arrangement where eventually the pressure becomes too much for the flap to be lifted and uh, the tense skin which is already very frail in the posterior superior pars tensa uh, automatically gets torn the most of the incus has now been freed from the uh, retraction pocket the most uh, anterior and the superior part of the incus long process is now being freed from the pocket as the pocket is constantly elevated both anteriorly as well as superiorly to uh, give uh, uh, a clean middle ear for us to initiate our grafting procedure on checking the mobility of the incus the the stp seems to be mo moving well so we are very sure of the uh, intactness of the incudostopedial joint and then then wherever possible that has to be uh, that should be maintained to be able to have a preserved hearing now once that has happened we need to elevate this uh, rest of the pocket from the uh, cora tympani as well which may not be a very good idea or very easy 
normally one could have sacrificed the Kora timpani, excised this pocket completely. However, given the fact that that already has been done on the opposite side with a modified radical mastoidectomy earlier, we would and given the fact that it's a pediatric patient, we are making all efforts to preserve at least the anatomic integrity of this Kora timpani, not to let it desiccate, not to maintain too much stretch over it, as well as not to cut it to avoid permanent taste disturbances. So, to be able to lift from the Cora tympani as well, this adhered uh, uh, part sensor retraction pocket, we are again trying to slightly increase the, the breadth of our flap inferiorly, so that again it is not tightly tethered to the corda area. So, we are just uh, making efforts to uh, widen the, uh, the flap breadth inferiorly, having done so superiorly over the uh, incus long process. Now, as we elevate the inferior annulus anteriorly, we can see that now the only part of the uh, the parse tensor retraction pocket that is uh, left uh, unelevated is the one that is attached to the corda. And again, as I said, that since we have to put a full thickness cartilage graft to augment the posterior superior parse tensor, this either the corda has to be transected or the epithelium has to be uh, elevated from the corda for the cartilage graft to go medial to it middle to the uh, uh, parse tensor. So, here once it is it is a well known fact that having too much traction of the corda can lead to gross desiccation and uh, create uh, uh, loss of function even if the corda is kept intact. Hence, uh, we would what we would what we recommend here in such situations is to uh, use uh, more of sharp dissection and less of blunt dissection over the corda, over the, the part sensor that is adhered to the corda to be able to lift it clearly because uh, too much pressure from the uh, blunt dissection can easily desiccate and stretch the corda to cause an e eventual uh, loss of function even with an intact nerve. So, here what we are now doing, we are using a small microfine iris scissors to basically uh, uh, elevate and excise this uh, pocket from the surface of corda which is a, a, a sort of an, a more safer way to uh, preserve the corda function. as we elevate this uh, retraction pocket from the corda, you can see that most of the retraction pocket of the parse tensor has been uh, elevated of the corda tympani, which can be now seen very clearly. In the end, end part on which the traction seems to be excessive, we again resort to the uh, micro scissors to elevate this of the surface of corda to avoid uh, unnecessary stretch and pull on the uh, nerve. While doing this step, one must be very, very cautious and guarded as to not, the, not, not to cut the corda itself while in, in an attempt to elevate the epithelium of it. Straight forceps, uh, straight, uh, straight scissors work here best as compared to curved ones, which are rather uh, in a very oblique angle and, and, don't, suff and don't suffice well. Now, as you can see here, we have gone all the way anteriorly till the level of the malleus neck to clear this epithelium from the surface of corda 
and now we have uh, all our middle ear structures very very well preserved which is the cauda again uh, the point is to irrigate to not let the nerve desiccate because of the uh, constant elevation of the structures from it so as we can see here the middle ear is fine it does not have any granulations disease or discharge the skin or the epithelium or the retraction pocket has been broadly elevated from not just the incus but as well as the cora tympani the incudostipedal joint is still intact and uh, is able to perform conduction so that is so much for disease removal which has been done and now we resort to harvesting a standard uh, a small portion of uh, tracheal cartilage graft which we will use full thickness with the perichondrium side facing lateral towards the ear canal and the uh, bare side of the cartilage facing medial uh, which is towards the ossicles to avoid any um, adhesion between them. Also uh, a single side periosteum attached left attached to the full thickness cartilage helps in maintaining overall vitality of the cartilage in, in long term and uh, prevents it becoming dysmorphic which a bare cartilage with no perichondrium can become eventually after many years. Now when we, ha when we harvest tragal cartilage one must be very careful not to destroy the dome of tragal, cart tragal cartilage because that is very important for cosmetic function. So, the incision is always given 2 to 3 millimeters medial to the dome and uh, we must only harvest the amount of cartilage we require there is no point taking more since here we have to only augment the posterior half or posterior third of the drum and we only harvest a, a, a semilunar shaped cartilage accordingly we do not intend to waste most of it. However, if one were to reconstruct the entire drum with cartilage or use it for a cavity obliteration then, then obviously a, a bigger size or a more appropriate size can be taken. For this part of the, the procedure the choice of tracheal cartilage is because of the, uh, the transcanal nature of surgery it happens in the same field however, if somebody is operating post orally then one could also think of uh, harvesting the conchal cartilage which uh, is again logical in that situation. So as we have seen now we can be using this uh, a little bit of gel foam to be kept in the middle ear as support you, we would only need to keep it in the inferior portion of the middle ear because superiorly we have the cauda tympani and the long process of incus which act as vital supports to our, to our cartilage. Now as you can see we take the semilunar shaped uh, piece of cartilage which is uh, and we place it in a way that the side on which perichondrium is attached faces laterally that is towards the skin and the side that is bare faces towards the middle ear ossicles and the middle wall of mesotympanum. Once the cartilage has been securely placed with the support of some gel foam we can see that you can easily uh, put the tympanometal flap back and there is no tear and the flap sits back nicely onto the uh, augmented portion of the cartilage in its assembly. Now normally we do not use any, any uh, packs inside the ear any cotton or gauze packs we just uh, fill the uh, external canals from the tympanic membrane to the meters with the uh, first dry followed by medicated gel foam and uh, uh, around a week or 10 days post surgery the patient can initiate putting ear drops uh, over the gel foam uh, followed by actual gel foam removal only uh, 6 to 8 weeks later. So this is a minimally invasive approach towards excision of limited retraction pockets.